It's so slippery here. Wow, I'm at full throttle. Full throttle now. Holy shit, I need to get up this hill. It is minus 25 degrees. We are reducing our EV fleet to two cars. So, which has to go? The Tesla, the bus, or the i3? Well, I'm kind of tired of the bus. We are now in the ID bus. Car scanner is ready. We are going to drive around 450 kilometers over a mountain. It's uh, around minus 15 to minus 20 degrees over that mountain. So we will see how well this car fares in uh, those conditions. I am also having my last trip with this exact car and I'll tell you the reason why in this video. While we are driving I'm going to talk about the good stuff and the bad stuff about the ID bus and my three month ownership of it. I'll also compare it to my other EVs like the i3 which by the way is based on a design from 2014 and my Tesla Model 3 2021 model that's over here. Okay, let's uh, reset the trip meter first. Data, let's see if I remember, long term. Reset, and we will be able to see this here, long term. Nice. Then we will go to navigation, and uh, we will go to, we are going to mode set, Tesla supercharger mode set, that's just 104 kilometers. We will start there and then see if we can skip this or uh, not. It estimates uh, it's 174 kilometers there if we press start and then we can swipe out this one and then we can see click here and then we can see that it estimates 50% on arrival uh, which is way too much but it's right before a mountain pass so we might need to charge uh, or we might not need to charge we will see we are at 96% we were at 100% plugged in but then I preconditioned the car which you, by the way, do precondition the climate. You don't precondition the battery. Uh, anyways, uh, with static aircon or auxiliary aircon here. And you click this one and then you just uh, set the departure time close to when we, you are leaving. So I did that and it was plugged in, but still it drew more power to actually precondition the cabin than it was able to get from the wall charger, which is interesting. Let's buckle up, let's see if we meet any challenges in the, this cold temperature with, uh, and with rear wheel drive and studless tires in these wet uh, snowy conditions. It can be uh, quite uh, dangerous um, when it's close to zero degrees and the snow snar uh, starts melting. And especially when you get an ice layer, uh, when it melts and then gets um, frozen overnight. Uh, it's kind of dangerous condition, so I need to take it uh, carefully when driving over the mountain with this uh, 2.5 metric tons car with rear wheel drive and studless uh, tires. So we will see. Hopefully we get some nice uh, scenery for you. So I'll mount, mount the camera in the front uh, like usual and uh, let's go. about to cross the Hardanger fjord, a beautiful fjord here in Norway, and we are about to cross this bridge. I think I've filmed this uh, many times before when I've uh, driven Oslo to Bergen. Anyways, we are at 50% now and we still are a bit away from the supercharger that we are going to. So actually the uh, GOM, the gasometer here, 
was completely wrong. And it now estimates 38% on arrival instead of 50. We are about 36 minutes away, 41 kilometers away from this uh, supercharger now. So our average efficiency is 251 watt hour per kilometer. And this is quite a bit uh, considering the, the road being quite dry so far. Oh wow, S some beautiful views over here um, with the sun. It's still uh, <coughs> 11 in the morning, so we are still getting a little bit of color on the sky, which is uh, awesome. And it's nice to drive now because it gets dark so early. So now we get the maximum daylight because we drove when the sun was getting up. So um, yeah, it's Sunday, so there's not much uh, traffic. There will be more traffic once we have crossed the mountains because people go home from their cabins for uh, getting ready for work tomorrow. So uh, yeah. Just a little quick update as we cross the Hardanger Fjord here and uh, pay the heavy toll price right here. Which, uh, yeah, you know, fair enough, we have to pay for the bridge. 250 watt hour per kilometer, not very good. That's a uh, bad efficiency. And I also see that we have a battery temperature of around 10 degrees, 8 degrees at the minimum, and 11 degrees at the maximum, so around 10 degrees Celsius. And the battery inlet is 7 degrees. This is very cold for the battery, so um, my guess is that when we plug into the supercharger we will get um, a good uh, throttle by the low temperature of the battery. As you know, batteries need to be hot enough for charging and it varies between batteries and chemistries what the optimal temperature is but I would say around 30 degrees Celsius would be better than 10, 10 degrees for charging. This is stupid. When I want to have a seat heater I expect this button to actually activate the seat heater but it will just open the climate menu and then you have to press This car is a canyon king. It takes uh, curvy roads uh, like a beast. Even on winter tires. You need to be very careful, of course. Wow, the battery is now almost 17 degrees at the maximum. That's much better than before, but still uh, pretty cold. So I'm interested to see what charging speed we get. It's so slippery here. Wow. I'm at full throttle. Full throttle now. Holy shit. I need to get up this hill. I can't break here. Holy. I'm just sliding. This is full throttle. Uh, beautiful views though, I must say. And we are soon at the charger, which is kinda in a shitty location in terms of uh, if it's isn't if it's slippery there, I can't get up from the charger. Anyways, we will see. Just need to take it carefully and maintain speed really. That's the only way to get through pure ice which is on the road right now.
these winter tires also suck because uh, there are um, I can't remember the brand actually but it's one of the more uh, affordable brands and uh, yeah they aren't uh, as good uh, as the expensive ones just letting them cross <laughs> because I can't uh, brake for them if they jump into the road so slippery okay here we have more grip that's good I don't think ice with Sun is the best condition for a, a two and a half metric ton rear-wheel drive car the traction control just kicks in at every little move of the accelerator and every little turn of the wheel the traction control just kicks in we are at 26 percent state of charge instead of 50 which it estimated when we started so uh, i don't know the conditions uh, appear suck so i guess that's one reason the other reason is that this hasn't the best route planning uh, in terms of uh, guess uh, guessing the estimated range on uh, on arrival and tesla does it better uh, while but tesla is not perfect either if the conditions uh, change uh, too much it'll uh, miss uh, by uh, yeah around 10 15 percent maybe but this one uh, <laughs> missed by 50 percent so it's worse i guess okay they have uh, plowed the area but it's still uh, icy and slippery but uh, we will be able to charge which is nice and there is an uh, Audi e-tron in uh, galactic blue the best car color ever made and a Hongxi actually and an ionic charging on the more expensive charger over there that's their choice of course we are charging at 73 kilowatts 84 kilowatts 97 kilowatts 108 kilowatts 109 kilowatts 113 kilowatts and the battery temperature is at a maximum of 16.5 degrees and at this state of charge we are getting um, pretty good speed I would say 110 is acceptable at 29% for this car I think it could go higher if the battery was uh, temperature was higher there are some weird clicking noises We have put in the next uh, supercharger at uh, Gol. It wants to stop at this one, but we won't do that. I hate that you can't remove charging stops. I want to know how long I need to stay here to be able to go to Gol. It estimates 18%, but that's if we charge for five minutes here. So um, yeah, I think I'll do as I always do. I will charge until this stop is removed and then I know I can go to Gol. Uh, even though the conditions are really bad so we are currently at 60 percent and we are taking 74 kilowatts and the battery temperature is now 31 degrees and it has stopped uh, trying to heat it up so i think we are at a good uh, temperature and it's minus eight outside by the way okay it estimates that we can get to ghoul without any charging stops you know the charging stop just removed itself so that means it's okay to go i think uh, at 19 percent and i think that's fine we will uh, see uh, 20 percent now i think we will just go and then see how it goes it's very slippery over the mountain here but we're going down from the mountain as well and this won't uh, calculate correctly from this in my opinion uh, the gasometer is not uh, not the best one so so uh, I think we will just go and uh, see how it goes. There are chargers that uh, we can bail out to, so if we need to.
it is minus 25 degrees outside. We are at the supercharger and it's almost full actually. So you can see the pull through stalls there and we are at the version 2. There are no version 3 left and I didn't want to take up any version 3 because our maximum power is around 170, 180 kilowatts and uh, uh, then we can use uh, version 2. But for some reason I only get 80 kilowatts even though I'm not sharing stall because I'm actually blocking the shared stall. I'm on 4B and 4A is the one I'm sharing with. So um, yeah, we have to do with this low um, kilowatts now. And then I know that this uh, charger is uh, likely to be occupied in the future, so maybe I can skip it. So just 80 kilowatts right now, as you can see here, uh, which uh, sucks. We are supposed to get uh, the maximum that V2 can give, which is 142 kilowatts uh, here. So you can see an ID4 and an Ionic charging over there. So uh, yeah, I'll just run to the bathroom and... Uh... Okay, we have charged here uh, for a little while. We are at 60% state of charge, both indicated and in the BMS. We got some uh, fast food, just uh, needed something to eat. So we got um, Coca-Cola without uh, the lid, of course. And some um, fried cheese. This is very healthy. And uh, a plain cheeseburger. So. We are at 60%, I'll uh, just eat up and then see what percentage we are at when we leave. We are at 70 kilowatts now. I saw that it maxed out around 100 kilowatts once the battery got a little bit warmer. But now we are down to 70 kilowatts again. So yeah, this supercharger is so full. So I feel kind of bad for taking up a spot, but I always monitor to see if there are other spots available. And you can also see that the pull-through stalls uh, have um, three that you can use right now. You can see that uh, auxiliary heating, which is the heater element in this car, actually consumes 6.5 kilowatts. That's um, a lot of power. I think uh, the Tesla is around uh, 2 kilowatts in the same uh, minus 16 degrees Celsius that is now. And now I also saw this while driving. And when you don't have a heat pump, you have a very inefficient uh, heater. Okay, we are ready to uh, leave. We are at 84%. I just finished my food and uh, we are ready to go. Let's see what it estimates on arrival. 26%, that's perfect. So uh, we will just unplug and uh, go. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the ID bus and why I am actually leaving it behind in Oslo and I'm flying back to Bergen. <coughs> the thing about the ID bus is that it's an uh, early electric vehicle from Volkswagen. Uh, it really is. And this car is amazing for what it is. It has no competitors like I have uh, explained before. There are no electric vans with such a good range than this one. And it has some really smart solutions charges okay its range is okay it's good for a van of course but it's just okay it doesn't have a heat pump it has a very bad software the software is significantly worse than the BMW i3 that I recently that we recently bought and that software was uh, the car is from 2019. I think the software was designed around 2017 or uh, something. This car came out in 2021 and uh, it does not have a leap on software. It's actually worse than the BMW iDrive system. Um, it's uh, sluggish, it's uh, slow, the navigation is just, the route planning is just okay. And um, this is an expensive car. In Norway, it's 500, 600,000 Norwegian kroners. And if you have seen my Model Y rear wheel drive review, that's 419,000 kroners. 
and you get a lot more car for your money if you can live with uh, the reduced space of the Model Y. It doesn't have a heat pump, which I think should be mandatory in all new electric cars, and it should not be an option, it should be included on every car. Uh, it gives more efficiency and uh, pushes manufacturers to make heat pumps uh, that are cost effective to put into cars. If they keep it at op as options, and people uh, leave them out, they will produce less heat pumps and they will optimize less, uh, usually. So I really want them to actually develop these heat pumps to be uh, so affordable that it's a no-brainer to put into cars, just like ABS is and uh, power steering and uh, anything else. It should be on that level. And it's not included here, and that means that we use 6 kilowatts to heat the cabin now. And um, the battery is never at the correct uh, temperature. And uh, yeah, we throw away a lot of, uh, lot of he uh, power to heat, because we don't uh, do it uh, efficiently. And on the software side, I talked about route planning, that you don't, you can't just remove charging stops. You have to wait until the charging stop is removed, and then the car thinks, okay, you actually don't need this charging stop. Okay, let's go. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I guess the route planning is just okay. And I expected more, really, from this car, but also not because I've heard so much bad stuff about Volkswagen software and the software is really bad, the system is so sh sluggish. Uh, I think um, a Model S from uh, 2013 will uh, beat this uh, software in terms of speed. This car takes away my attention from the road more than my Tesla and this one, this car has more button. The climate control sucks, it doesn't have uh, lights to show you where you are going to slide or press if you're going to increase or decrease the climate control. On my Tesla I can just adjust it with the steering wheel knob, you, you have a button on the steering wheel which you can adjust with or you can simply reach out to the touchscreen and you know where to press, the response is instant. The problem with this car is that everything is delayed by like uh, half a second when you press stuff, so you, and the feedback is also delayed, so you don't know if you pressed something correctly, and that forces you to look over and see if you pressed it correctly. And uh, I think that's a really bad automotive design. They should just have physical buttons or a really responsive touchscreen like Tesla with uh, options to place the buttons on other places like the steering wheel, if they are going to remove stuff or make them non-tactile non feedback buttons. I, I enjoy tactile feedback buttons like in the BMW i3 that we bought, so, so of course that's uh, the best solution. But if you're going to make touch uh, controls, you need to make them responsive. They, they need to respond immediately uh, when you press the buttons. And the same with door locking uh, button, it's uh, like a capacitive uh, button, and uh, it kind of sucks. And the defrost in the front, I, there is no feedback. And there is no, uh, it doesn't help me place my finger where I'm going to place it when I'm pressing the button. And this means that I have to look over and click on them. And if you have buttons like these, you can just as well have them on the uh, touch screen in the middle. There is no reason to have buttons that have no feedback uh, around. That's just a more useless touch screen that you can't update via software updates. So if you are actually going to have these buttons, please just make them on the touch screen, then you can update them later. Of course, uh, tactile feedback uh, is the best uh, solution, so I enjoy the buttons that actually are, like the blinkers are fantastic in this car, but uh, all the steering wheel buttons are also capacitive with a delay when you click on them, like volume up, volume down, next song, uh, the cruise control set, the cruise control speed and the cruise control distance have these uh, shitty buttons. These buttons are also in uh, piano black, uh, which uh, surfaces you touch should never be piano black. The windshield wipers are uh, great. Uh, the windshield wiper tactile feedback on uh, the stalks with these uh, flip buttons are great. That's fantastic. And the gear selector is uh, great as well. Uh, it's very similar to the i3, actually, so uh, I like it. The 
climate menu sucks. Uh, like I have told you before, you, there is a menu to go into heated seats. On uh, Tesla, there is no menu to go into heated seats. Uh, the heated steering wheel menu, and there is no menu to go into heated steering wheel on the Tesla. Tesla is easier to, to press, even though Tesla has less buttons. Isn't that insane? And uh, modifying the temperature, like I told you, there is no light on the strip where you are supposed to press, so you can't see it in the dark, and it's very difficult to feel. There is a groove, but you can't feel um, the correct um, X uh, play, uh, placement of the hand. So, so um, that sucks. So it's actually easier to adjust the climate control with the touchscreen on the Tesla than these dedicated sliders that you have on this car. So I think that's uh, that's a miss. I like the center um, screen before the steering wheel, the gauge cluster. It shows the speed, it shows my efficiency, and it shows the cruise control stuff. And you can also decide what other stuff it's going to show. This is great. Uh, I'm pretty used to the Model 3 with the... Uh, I don't find that as a problem, that the uh, speedometer is on the center screen. But yeah, it's it's always nice to have an extra screen with more information. And I think I use it more to adjust uh, cruise control and stuff like that than to watch the speedometer. I use cruise control a lot in this car. That moves us over to the point about cruise control. The cruise control is uh, good. This car doesn't have lane assist, but I have used lane assist uh, with Volkswagen through travel assist, that they call, call it. Travel assist is great. This car phantom brakes uh, for um, speed limits, just like the Tesla, so there is no improvements there. Uh, but I know that's a problem on many cars with uh, speed limit readers, so, uh, so that's unfortunate. But uh, I find um, the cruise control to be a tad better than the Tesla. Because you, when you are passing someone, if you are running on a four-lane highway and you are going to pass someone and you blink out, the car which will actually speed up. The Tesla won't do that, they will, uh, it will brake for the car uh, um, before you, so you can't really pass without pressing the accelerator. But this car lets you pass because it uh, accelerates up when you are blinking to the left, which uh, is the correct way to do it. This car has some smart uh, solutions, like the hooks in the back for groceries and the large uh, tailgate in the back and the sliding doors. So it gives uh, a lot of space for cargo and it's easy to load and unload stuff. It has a semi-automatic uh, tow hitch, which is fantastic. Tesla doesn't have that. Uh, the i3, of course, has, uh, doesn't have that. Um, so, so, yeah. Um, it's semi-automatic. I think that's uh, you can have a fully automatic tow hitch as well, but at that point I feel like that's a luxury feature, very luxury feature. Semi-automatic is perfectly adequate and I kind of feel like it's uh, less a chance that it will break, so maybe I, uh, I um, prefer a semi-automatic tow hitch actually. And the sliding doors on this one is manual, the tailgate uh, is uh, powered but the sliding doors are um, manual which I think is the correct way to do it unless you need automatic for accessibility or something the the sliding doors are um, a prone failure point on uh, many minivans and stuff when they are powered it's uh, something that's difficult to get right they are always too slow but this one is uh, manual and it could just slam the doors shut whenever you feel like it so that was some good th uh, things and some bad things about this car. Of course there is a future ID bus coming with four wheel drive and long wheelbase and bigger battery and hopefully a heat pump and also probably a lot of software features that we have seen in the ID7 which looks really promising uh, compared to the current software. So I'm super stoked to follow the bus uh, buses further development. It's still one of my favorite cars. It's um, very good at what it's marketed as, uh, as a family car and as a car that can actually carry a lot of stuff. Um, it's comfortable, the sound system sucks, they need to update the sound system, get some options in there at least. 
get, uh, I don't know uh, what Volkswagen used, they use Bango and Olufsen maybe, I can't remember, anyways, just get a, get a proper sound system in this car, that's needed. And um, it's great as it is, I would probably try to buy it discounted and realize the shortcomings. We will, um, we will see the further development. The new IDBus that's coming looks very promising because it will fix a lot of the issues with this car, uh, like the range and software. Um, so I'm super stoked for uh, that one. Can't wait to see what Volkswagen brings uh, to the table. They need uh, these uh, cars uh, to sell and if you... The only way to sell vehicles is to make good vehicles. So uh, let's hope for the best for a new ID bus. A quick update on our efficiency numbers. 272 watt hour per kilometer so far. It's minus 18 degrees outside, so it's pretty cold. We are still using 6 kilowatts to heat the cabin uh, with the auxiliary heater that they call it. We have 80% state of charge. We have 157 kilometers to our destination. The efficiency is uh, really bad at the moment and it's a combination of slippery road and cold conditions. And it doesn't really help that we are cold gating on the, when we are charging. That means that the battery is too cold to accept the full charge. So it has been a little bit slow, but I think we only need uh, the, these two charging stops for this entire journey. I might top up a little bit before I deliver the car, but uh, to get to, from Bergen to Oslo, we only needed two charging stops. Or the first one was uh, like uh, 20 minutes and the second one here was maybe 35 minutes charging. So uh, around uh, one hour total charging time to get from Bergen to Oslo in uh, these very cold uh, temperatures for this location. It was minus 25 over Hardangevida, which is the mountain pass that we went over. And now the battery temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius. And uh, it has stabilized at that since the beginning, since we started charging. And uh, after that, it has just slowly declined until we charged again so the battery temperature seems to be a, in a healthy 25 degrees celsius i just wanted to stop here to show you the chaos so we can see the audi e-tron is charging <laughs> on the last stall there and there are a ton of teslas over there and other teslas over there at the pull through stalls and the circle k chargers are full of people we are doing a final wash of the car, uh, just in this automatic car wash, without those, of course, just uh, touchless car wash. Before we deliver this uh, car back to the owners, and um, I lent this car for three months, so I have had a lot of thoughts on this car, uh, and you can see that on my channel, of course. I've talked about it in this video and multiple other videos. So. Just let me go over the final stats uh, now that we are in uh, the touchless car wash right before delivery of this car. I'm going to charge it a little bit before I deliver it as well. So we have driven 464 kilometers with an average efficiency of 271 watt hour per kilometer. That's the same as 27.1 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer, uh, like you can see here. So we have had very low efficiency on this drive. Of course, this car doesn't have a heat pump and uh, we can look at the um, stats there. Now the heater is on and you can see it's heating at 4.7 kilowatt, uh, kilowatts, which is a lot. Uh, the battery temperature has gone back to normal. The temperature outside is minus eight degrees uh, inside here, but it's like minus 14 degrees outside. Uh, so, um, yeah, if no management keeps the battery at a higher temperature, it'll drop uh, closer and closer to zero. So the estimated uh, battery left is 35%. I think that was it for this uh, video. Uh, thank you so much for following the IDBus journey. Maybe there will be more in the future. I'm going to ask uh, Volkswagen in uh, Norway 
uh, about lending the new ones that comes out. I know there will uh, be a new and better ID bus next year and I'm super stoked to see uh, what I can do with this car because I really love the practicality of uh, this car and certain other things as well. Like the turning radius is amazing. The seat material here is one of my favorites. I really like it. Uh, not the seats themselves, unfortunately, but the material is uh, so nice on the seat. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're interested in uh, more uh, stuff like this and uh, other videos on electric vehicles as well. You can also watch my other videos on the IDBus. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this and videos that are not like this, you can subscribe to this channel. I see a lot of people that uh, watch my videos that uh, don't subscribe. So please leave uh, any feedback in the comments and I'll try to improve.